take away my packaging, how will I protect it from light? Hello, and welcome to the Whiskey Trials. Um, I just recorded this complete video and realised watching it back that the sound had failed. I don't know what wrong with you, stupid microphone. Something went awry. Uh, exactly the same settings as my previous videos, but something's happened. So I've, I've had to change the settings a little bit and uh, I'm watching my levels now. So, yeah, apologies if I'm if I look distracted because I'm looking down here to make sure that you can bloody well hear me. <sighs> anyway, before I tell you what this video is about, Glen Gyle Distillery, Kilcarran, uh, Springbank and the like has announced that uh, some of their range will now be naked. No packaging. Now, if you've watched some of my previous videos, just like the recent ones, I, I, I talk about packaging and I have been talking about whether or not it is, you know, like a, a sort of ethical thing right now, whether we should, uh, distilleries and supermarkets should be looking at it and perhaps uh, putting out less packaging, less boxes. And I mean, let's face it, I've got one down here. The Springbank box doesn't do much to protect from the old light. Anyway, there's a big old gap there. Um, but it, it did get me thinking. So comments below, please, on who you think is the worst distillery for packaging. I know who I think it is, and I think it's uh, Glenfiddich. Because over the years, I have seen many Glenfiddich uh, tins, if you will. Yeah, tins, boxes, all the rest of it. And they've got tins with claspy bits wrapped in leather and just like, no, that cannot be good, right? You're, you know, killing cows to wrap this and then mining stuff and creating the tin and, you know, probably putting some kind of horrible printing zzz, liquid horrible stuff full of chemicals on it so in general you know i i, I quite often talk about packaging because I, I i'm into branding i like the, all that kind of stuff but i'm also into um you know not destroying the world and i'm quite uh, uh, eco-friendly in many ways uh so yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of like, I'd like to see distilleries and supermarkets and stuff do better. And I kind of think that this is a really great move. It, they've said that it's going to be more core range stuff. So perhaps the uh, uh, Springback 10, Kilcarran 12 are going to be now sold naked. Uh, I don't know about some of the others, but it's a step in the right direction. And yeah, okay, I made a, a funny comment at the very beginning of the video um, about, um, you know, people concerned about, you know, the light getting to it and all the rest of it. You know, uh, it, it's, it's one of those things where if you're a collector, if you're a, a flipper or whatever, and you're storing a, a, a bottle for uh, a little bit of time, mm -hmm. just don't have it on display. Don't have it up on, on the shelf. Who cares? Stick it in another box, a different box, some other box that you've got, a tin that you've got, a spare tin, and stick it away, or stick it away in the back of a cupboard to gather dust. It's going to gather dust either way, right? Um, it's it's not like you're drinking it. If you're drinking it, it don't matter if you get a box or not. Essentially. So yeah, comments below, please, if you uh, if you disagree, if you're like very concerned about light and your whiskey being damaged by the light. Personally. Not entirely sure. It makes a difference. I think heat is uh, much more of a factor. Humidity, heat and humidity. You want a, a stable temperature that uh, doesn't fluctuate too much. Um, but even still, you know, uh, I've got mine in a, a sort of laundry room and I guess it gets, you know, fairly warm or uh, cool in there. It, it fluctuates a fair bit. It's not it's not a steady, a steady temperature for sure. And most of my corks, 99% of my corks are great. So, wow, this video is about Kilcarran. Well done, Kilcarran. Well done, well done, Glen Gyle, for the whole, you know, leading the way, leading the industry down a path of eco-friendliness 
And to celebrate that, you know, I did a, a Springbank video just the other day. And now I'm going to do a Kilcairn video for the second time. It was the second time I've done this. But what can I say? I'm doing it for you guys. It's uh, it's no punishment because I've got three amazing whiskies. And what are, we, what are we talking about? Um, In fact, instead of lifting one up, I'm going to go to the whiskey cam. The whiskey cam. So let me just position this a little bit better. And it is the heavily peated. Uh, batch four recently released. I don't have it. Wish I got it. I was too slow. Didn't realize it was out. Whatever. Um, I'm sure it's amazing. Um, but I have one, two, and three. And they are uh, one, two, and three in that order. So batch one is 59.3%. <whistles> batch two is 60.9%. Oh, lordy. And batch three is 59.7%. Sweet. Jesus. So, hefty drams, heavily peated, uh, I'm guessing. Um, in fact, I'm probably pretty sure that non-chill filtered and no colouring added, uh, judging by those colours. The webcam doesn't really show you the uh, uh, the colour properly. I would say that uh, batch one is darker, batch two is um, a bit lighter, and batch three is lighter still. Um, but yeah, the, the webcam doesn't really pick them up so well. Yeah. Mm, kind of see it there, but it's it's near the best. It's near the best. So these bottles, obviously, batch one, batch two, batch three, bought years ago. Uh, I've been sitting open on my shelf for ages. I've been meaning to do this video for ages. These drams poured for a while as well. So all in all, everything's been aired out um, quite significantly. I'm going to just like bash on with this. I've done it once already and it's not that I want to get through it. Uh, I think um, now that I've done it once, I know some bits that I might want to cut out. So the way this is going to work is I'm going to nose all three and then I'm going to taste all three. And uh, normally I do like a an echo at the end. I'm not going to do the echo. Um, I did do it in the previous video and I really struggled because um, obviously when you're tasting three very similar whiskies, um, the it just kind of gets it, it gets a bit mixed up with what's the the sort of residual flavor so i i i, I kind of don't see the point let's get into the nose okay now batch one Ooh. let me tell you straight away about batch one batch one um changed my life in in a in a certain way because i i rem I've got this memory. I, re I remember very clearly when I opened it, how I opened it, uh, where I was sitting. Sarah was sitting over in, on the couch. I was over at the dining table and I'm smelling this dram and I'm taking notes. And it was like, it was really kind of at the beginning of my uh, uh, peat journey. I'd done some uh, some other stuff, Laphroaig, uh, Lagavulin and uh, Bits and Bobs. Uh, and, and I realised that I much preferred the peaty note to the necessarily the, the kind of smoky note. So it just so happened that Kilcarran came out with this, this batch one. And I was like, wow, that's like mega value, right? It's like 59.3, 70 uh, CL uh, for 40 quid, 45 quid, something like that. I was like, sold. Um, and smelling this now really takes me back to that, that kind of memory. Um, but being on the, the start of my peat journey, uh, I suppose I, I remember this probably being a bit more peaty and a bit more smoky than than I'm going to experience right now. But my massive, this is this is the only one out of all three that really sticks in my head for like a massive takeaway. I always go on about these takeaways, don't I? So my main takeaway, uh, and it was uh, toasted marshmallows on a campfire. It's just where it took me. In my head, I was like, this is toasted marshmallows on a campfire. And I, I can still get that a bit on the nose. Still so punchy. Been years in that bottle and whew, punchy on the nose. But definitely got that campfire smoke here. It's 
citrusy as well, lemons and, and, and limes. Quite sharp. It kind of feels like that on the nose as well, because it's quite punchy with the ABV, but the the, the citrusiness uh, really helps there and, and kind of makes it quite sharp on the nose. But I'm get I'm getting the I'm getting the peat and I'm getting the the oak and I'm I'm getting. I'd say the beginnings of some complex sweet notes that aren't quite fully um, come to fruition yet. Oh, nearly went to taste it there. I really want to taste it. I mean, I've already done, I've already tasted all three of these, so... Apologies if I seem slightly tipsy, but um, you know these are quite strong grams. I have only been taking uh, sort of small, small nips and small uh, measures of them. But okay, so batch two. I would say batch two is much more floral. There's still a bit of smoke there. I'm going to say less peat. Maybe a tad more oakiness. It it smells um lighter, if that makes sense. Even though it's bigger on the ABV, it's sixty point nine on the ABV. It smells like it is gonna be spicy. Um, in fact, you know, the first one smelt kind of spicy too, but perhaps that one was a different kind of spice a bit. Okay, batch three. Batch three, batch three. Oh, now then. Uh, batch three is uh, changing the game a little bit on the nose. Wow, I really don't remember the, the nose being like this on batch three. And I see I have these kind of uh, fond memories of batch one, uh, which maybe, uh, you know, might have made this, that might have made batch one the, the favorite coming into this. Uh, but wow. Well, I mean, it's like, it's, 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 it's much more punchy on the nose. Like I'm, I'm struggling to get my nose right in there with this one. And it is, 59.7, so it's, it's less than the 60, but I suppose it's not been sitting around as long as the other two if we wanted to be uh, argumentative about it. So with this one, I think I'm getting much more of this, the complex sweet notes that I um, thought were, you know, they were the beginnings of on, on batch one. Werther's original. That is, that nails it for me. It is Werther's original. Slightly smoky. You're eating a Werther's original uh, at the campfire. And actually, batch, batch two was much more um, like ice cream next to a campfire. And batch one is much more like marshmallows next to a campfire. So there you go. Oh, I'm getting a, I'm getting something strange there that I'm, I didn't quite get in the uh, the last uh, round of the previous video that didn't work. Hmm. Slightly like something slightly green, like uh, green oak, but you know, I I don't want to say uh, I don't want to say my initial thought because uh. I said it before, and it was kind of funny. I've I've only ever had it um, sort of once before tasting a, a whiskey, and it's like the skin off a cucumber. It's kind of weird. Oh, there we go. There's potentially what I I, I missed the last time round, and just got as soon as I mentioned cucumber, uh, and it, it led on. Uh, it's it's amazing how how that happens once you identify something that leads some on to something else. And it's mint, and I think uh, 
correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, but I think Kilcarran might be known for Mint. I'm not entirely sure. But this one uh, smells like it's uh, a little bit more complex. It's got some nicer uh, sweet notes, the, the sort of to toffees, caramels, butterscotch, butterscotch, essentially a, a Werther's original uh, in a glass. Right. The palette. This is where it gets interesting. And this is where Neil gets even more tipsy. Whew! Alright. Batch one. Definitely get a bit a, a bit of the smoke. So the campfire smoke is there. There's peat. There's spice. There is that zestiness. It is more leaning towards the, the kind of lemon and limes. It's really good. Um, a, a real top dram. I can see why I was like so taken with it at the time. I think I probably preferred it at the time than I do now. Um, don't know why that might be. Uh, I, I'm. I think uh, from my takeaway, from my memory of it, all I can think about is uh, toasted marshmallows. And actually, you do, you do, you do get that with this. There is that sweetness there, and there is that residual flavor um, of of slight, slight burntness. So it's like when you jam your your uh, marshmallow too far into the fire and it kind of cooks nicely on the sides but it burns on the, the front edge and it's that burnt real carbony caramelized burntness that it kind of comes back on this it's uh it's really good it's and it, but it's balanced you know it's not like it is a horrible burnt marshmallow Mm -mm. Yeah, not not mega spicy. Definitely more smoke and char and <clears throat> that kind of burnt flavouring going on with batch one. Let's take lots of. Mm. A little bit more of the uh, sort of toffee notes there when I'm smelling this one. Okay. Yeah, this one, this one's definitely more floral. Kind of more fruity. I'd say the lemon and lime has changed a little bit over to oranginess in this. Um, a bit more oak, less peat and less smoke, guaranteed, than the uh, than batch one. Hmm. Definitely. Okay. The batch three. That nose. I have to say it. Batch three on nose um is the winner. And then I'm gonna say uh so it goes three, one, two. Batch three is the best uh on the nose for me. And then uh one and then two. But what about the palette? Hmm. It kind of almost feels different in your mouth. It, it it's it's creamier, silkier, oilier, 
it does have it is like you're you know sucking on a where there's original next to a campfire of course because you've got that kind of smoky peaty thing going on as well but yeah getting the uh, in, in all of them actually there is that kind of malty biscuity uh, this but you, know, you take your uh, take your nose away from the glass on this one and it's really present like shreddies yeah Mm. I mean, all of, all of these are amazing drums, and I, I I kind of at the start of this video, I was like, is there any point doing this video because you know these these guys aren't on sale anymore, but because Kilcairn heavily peated has been so heavily collected and flipped, um, I'm sure you could probably still find these in auction coming up over the next few years, um, and obviously depending on you know the kind of flavor profiles that you might like you know this this review or this comparison could potentially help you uh, for me um both on the nose and the palate uh, i i think batch 3 really wins out for me um which is not something that i remember um from from going through these three i <clears throat> i definitely didn't enjoy batch two as much as I enjoyed batch one um but obviously when you first try a whiskey it's like oh wow and you 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 kind of build you know that memory up from that that first whiskey um so yeah maybe maybe batch one has a an un, a slight unfair advantage for me I would say though that batch one has much more uh, sort of campfire smoke so if you like that kind of campfire smoke mixed with the sweetness you know obviously I've said my takeaway was the uh Toasted marshmallow. If you like that, then batch one. Uh, batch two, I feel, although higher ABV, for me, lighter in flavor profile. So it's uh, there's more floral notes. There's fruity, fruitier notes. Um, I did get some more sort of toffees on the nose, unlike batch one, which is kind of more basic with the sweet notes on the nose. I think as they go through, as they progress through the batches, it gets more complex. So yeah, batch two. More more wood, more floral, more fruit, maybe more orangey uh, with the citrus note. Um, and yeah, it, it, like a weird one. It, it, they're all kind of got spice to them. Um, but I think, strangely, I'm going to try it again. I think strangely, like, it'll be at like 60.9%, the strongest out of all of these. I think this one might have had the less, the least amount of spice. If you want to go for spice, I always say, roll it about your face. Get it to the side of your tongues and underneath your tongue. And that's where you're going to get the spice. And some of the sour notes and stuff as well. Some of the more bitter notes. No, that's... I, no. That isn't as spicy as the other ones, I don't think. Uh, batch 2. And then uh, Batch 3, much more developed, I, I think, on the nose... With the the kind of toffees, the butterscotch, the caramel, like I said, that Werther's original kind of feel, just mm, so good. You know, I I can I can see it in my head. I can see, you know, like a bunch of scouts <laughs> around about the campfire, passing out Werther's originals because you know that's what scouts do because they're really good and they they don't drink whiskey or or anything like that. They do bad stuff around the, uh, the campfire. Um. So yeah, if you ever come across any of these three in auction, I I would have no qualms in buying uh, any three of them. You're going to enjoy them. Um, but hopefully, you know, if they all came up at the same time, this video might help you choose the one that um, you're most kind of connected with. So yeah, um, I'm kind of I'm kind of annoyed that I missed out on the the batch four. Um, I've really not been keeping up to date with the the kind of whiskey releases and and all that kind of stuff i just I, I play it by ear when i'm when i'm going to buy whiskey when i feel i've got the money to buy whiskey i go online and i look for what's available at that point in time 
or I'm on an auction and I see what's available on an auction. So I'm not a chaser now. I've, I've been through that whole FOMO thing and chasing whiskey. It's not for me. I don't. I don't want to. I don't want to uh, drink whiskey like that. I don't want to compete. I don't want to be disappointed. I mean, I am disappointed that I, I don't have the batch four, but um, like I wasn't trying to buy it. I think if I was trying to buy it, and I got beaten by a load of collectors, flippers, and you know other aficionados, then I would have been, uh, you know, more disappointed by it. Um, but yeah, all in all, I hope the sound in this video worked because. <laughs> I really do. I really don't think I can do it a third time. I'll be on the floor. So until next time, slancha.